All right, I'm gonna turn my mannequin or my patient toward me. I've moved up to the uh, 1130 position and I'm gonna start with the um, Gracie 1314 and we have to check for the correct end again. So I'm gonna come through the arch and I'm gonna place it on the distal. And I'm gonna look for the lower third of the chain to be parallel with the long axis of the tooth. And when it's wrong, it's really wrong, mm -hmm. all right? Okay, so now I'm, I'm coming in through the arch. I'd be retracting the cheek. I'm gonna go in closed or pulling close to the tooth and then open slightly, keeping my terminal third of the blade or cutting edge on the tooth. Stop. I'm gonna go to the next tooth adjust my grasp, go in closed, and then open beginning at the distal line angle. And I have to pull my handle slightly out so that I can go across that distal surface. So once I'm open, I stay open. All right, I'm just lifting and lowering that cutting edge. For area six, I'm just gonna move back to area six, and I'm gonna look through my handles, go in closed, and then open, and I might bump over these top teeth. And that's okay, because you want to get your hand on the lingual. Because remember, these mandibular uh, posterior teeth are leaning toward the lingual, so you need to as well. And you know that the reason I'm not using gloves is so that you can see what my fingers look mm -hmm. like, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my 1516, which is used in the mesial direction. And I'm gonna check it on the mesial. So I'm gonna come across the arch and place it just on the mesial surface. All right, now I'm gonna start at the distal line angle. I'm gonna pull in closed and then open slightly. I'm using my mirror to retract the cheek to see around, you know, any part of the tooth that I need to with indirect vision or for some lighting. When I finish, I'm going to stop, go to the next tooth, insert closed and explore, and then open once I find the debris and I've gotten underneath it. overlapping my strokes using the toe third so you know remember toe to two toe to two toe to two and then rolling every stroke toward the two because your shank is going to tell you 
what you're working and just doing. Okay. Now, if you look closely, you might think that I'm using finger motion. Did you think that? Okay, I'm not. So as I'm coming up, I'm squeezing the instrument to make sure I have enough pressure. Okay. And letting up on my um, apical stroke, which is my exploratory stroke. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. But I'm still doing this, did you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. For area six, I'm gonna come back over. I'm gonna start at the distal line angle. I know I've got the right end because I had the right end in five, right? Mm -hmm. It's mirror image. And remember that your fulcrum is unstable in this area. you would be using your mirror for indirect vision. And the closer your fulcrum, the better. Now, the 1718, I'm going to come across the arch. It's a distal instrument, remember. So I'm going to check it on the distal. Very wrong. Very wrong. <laughs> Correct. All right. So I'm going to just do it on these, use it on these uh, three molars. So I'm going to go in closed and open. Now look at my handle. It's back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's not all the way back between my index finger and my thumb, is it? No, it's just here. Right. Closed and then open. Area six. I'm just going to take the same end, go in closed and open. And my handle is going to cross the occlusal because of all the bends in the shank, and that's okay because my lower third of the shank is on the same side that I'm working on. And this particular instrument, if you get it, the cutting edge on the middle of it, it's gonna bite and you're not gonna be able to move it at all. Okay. So that's kind of a clue to you that you need to roll it in to the terminal third. Okay. Okay. Because if it gets here, it's not gonna move. It needs to be here. And your shank is going to tell you if you're rolled in enough. So you want to look at your shank with any of these instruments. Okay, so for instance, if you're not rolled in enough, your shank is going to be too close to the mesial surface. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you're perfect, it's going to be pretty close to being parallel. And if you're rolled too far, it's going to be out over the tooth next door. Mm -hmm. okay. And then that means you're on the very tip end. So you got to watch what your shank is doing because you're going to be subgingival. You're not going to be able to see your working in, so you've got to rely on what your shank is telling you. 